Central to all Christian literature are four books known as the Gospels. From ancient times until today, the four Gospel writers are associated with four angelic creatures. The man, the lion, the ox, and the eagle. Let's find out why. The main text of the Christian faith is the Bible. The word Bible literally means the book, but it is actually a lot of books. We look at all of these books through the lens of the life and the ministry and teaching of Jesus Christ. So the most important of the books are the four Gospels, which outline what he did, what he said, and what he promised. Now, with these books being as valuable as they are, it's no surprise that the authors are big heroes of ours. And from very early on, and across the Christian world, these four authors are associated with these four symbolic creatures. You see it everywhere from documents in Britain, you'll see it in churches in Eastern Europe, you'll see it in Greece, you'll see it in North Africa. It is everywhere. It is a pretty widely accepted symbolic practice of representing the authors of these four books that all Christians love so much. These creatures are quite dramatic and exciting, and the origin of this idea of the Gospels actually goes back centuries before the Gospels were even written. We're going back to the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament. Now, Ezekiel is a book of prophecy. It is laid with a lot of symbolic meaning. It isn't the easiest book to understand just on a surface read. It is, practically speaking, one of the most intense and extreme reading experiences in the Bible. For instance, if you look up the Valley of Dried Bones, it is epic and pure cinema. But the moment that is related to the Gospels is in one of Ezekiel's symbolic dreams. He sees angels, four angels. Each of these four angels has four faces. The four faces are a man, an ox, a lion, and an eagle. That's quite unusual, but something like it happens again in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, John sees four creatures around a single throne. Each of these four creatures has a different face. One has the face of a lion. One has a face that resembles an ox. One resembles a man, and the other resembles an eagle in flight. The first recorded use of this symbolism is by Irenaeus of Lyon, a third generation Christian that lived in the second century. Now, the association of which of these creatures belongs to which gospel writer varies a little bit in the early church, but we are going to introduce it in the way that is most widely accepted across the world today. Matthew is represented by a divine man. Man, man if that helps you remember. It looks like an angel because it has wings, but it is better understood symbolically as an angelic man because the representation is the man, the incarnation. Because Matthew's gospel focuses quite strongly on the incarnation and he opens up with a breakdown of Jesus's earthly lineage, who were his ancestors. So man is a good one for Matthew. Mark is the lion. Now this one is very easy for me to remember because Mark's gospel is so intense, it's so fast, it's quick, it's really rapid pacing, and so a lion just suits that in my head, and so I don't struggle to remember that Mark is the lion. But also, Mark opens up with a verse from Isaiah. Mark quotes Isaiah when he opens the gospel, and Isaiah was a voice crying in the wilderness. And that's very similar to a lion. The lion suits Mark as a gospel. For me, for the rapid pacing of it, but symbolically there as well with that connection to Isaiah. Luke is represented by an ox or a bull. A way to remember is that bull ends with L and Luke starts with L. The ox was an animal used in sacrifice and it was deeply symbolic to the Jewish people. Luke opens up his gospel with a lot of writing on Zechariah, John and temple traditions. And so the ox as a symbol of temple traditions, of sacrifice, is the right animal to associate with Luke. Finally, we have the eagle. The eagle is a majestic soaring creature and represents the Gospel of John, a gospel that really soars to heaven. It is a very powerful gospel and the deepest of the gospels. Now, the eagle is normally portrayed as about to take flight. It is about to soar over the world. The Gospel of John is very heavily concerned with the business of heaven and an eagle is such a heavenly creature, a creature that flies through the heavens and it is a perfect association. It's not just the eagle that's doing the flying though, because all four of these creatures, of well, eagle obviously, but all four of them have wings generally when they're portrayed. It's a flying man, it's a flying ox and a flying lion. Because the four gospels fly over the face of the world. They fly everywhere and the gospels are used by Christians all over the world. Each of the four creatures in Ezekiel has four faces and all four of these creatures are represented on each angel. In the book of Revelation, there are four creatures surrounding one throne and like that, in Christianity, in order to understand Christ, we need all four Gospels, not just one. 
Through the Gospels, we encounter Jesus Christ, and Jesus is the lens through which we can understand the entire Bible and our entire faith. But don't just read the text. Pray. Go to church. Find out what early Christians and what the church has taught about what the Bible teaches and has been teaching consistently for 2,000 years. Find out what the Bible teaches us about Jesus Christ. In the words of John Chrysostom, it is not possible, I say not possible, to ever exhaust the depth of the Holy Scriptures. It is a well to which there is no end. Thank you for returning to Patristics and watching this episode. This is one of many episodes that hopefully will come to this channel talking about the four Gospels. They are very powerful books and there is a lot to be said about them. In terms of what tea I am drinking, it is once again Malaysian Tetarik. Now we've had it before on this channel and uh, we'll probably have it again because it is absolutely delicious.